Hello, welcome to the 24th and final question corner, uh, where we, myself and Neela, for the last three years or so, have uh, done our best to answer your questions about Kamunda things. Um, obviously, as usual, from two very different locations this time around, from the harsh winter in Berlin right now is myself, Niall Dean, developer advocate with Kamunda, and from the safety and joy of a beach in Malaga, I assume for some reason Neil is indoors right now, uh, Neela uh, in Spain. Um, uh, so if anyone wants to be angry at Neela, um, the, the jealousy is enough of a reason for today. But thank you for joining us. We will, of course, are here to answer your questions. How are those questions asked? Well, you need to join Slido. Um, now, this Slido link has been up for a while. Um, it's been up for about a week or so. So people have already been sending us in questions. Um, but you lovely people who have decided to show up today, uh, my favorite people, uh, as always, um, we will take your questions far more seriously because you came in person. So you can scan this lovely QR code, or I think probably there's a link somewhere to it in the chat. Um, or go to slido.com and type in uh, QC24, and you should then end up uh, uh, here. It's more important than ever that you join this because we will be doing a quiz shortly. But if in case you are interested in answering questions, it's very easy. You either think of something wonderful and unique and you type it in right there. Then if people think that what you've written is really great or you see what someone else has written is particularly great, you can upvote it and then we'll generally get to it. Um, yeah, that's how it works. Um, question few, as I mentioned, are most important, so we'll always try and get to those first. Okay, so yeah, let's not waste any more time. Um, so I'm actually going to try and already drop into this. Let's hope it works. I have decided to uh, create a quiz for everybody because this is our last question corner, and therefore I would very much like to turn the tables on you all, and oh my God. God, we'll answer questions that we give you. Um, they are all about BPMN, so that you should all know this. Anyone who doesn't will be um, publicly shamed, I guess. This recording is going out right now. I just wanted to say that David is like uh, getting an extra point because he was so fast. You literally just <laughs> opened the quiz that he was in there already. So <laughs> good work. We'll give it like one or two more minutes to join the quiz. Just scan the uh, QR code there, go to the quiz section and then sign up. Um, there, the greatest prize I could possibly give you for this quiz is my own admiration and Neela's as well, I assume. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Less so, Neil is of admiration, apparently. So oh, let's man. see how uh, we can get on. So let's start the quiz. Um, we have one, two, three, four, five. Yep. Well, uh, a large amount of people who've joined the quiz. Um, uh, I mean, if you, it's a little bit like if you've ever done a training, a BPMN training, the section about BPMN roulette, it reminds me a little bit of BPMN roulette, actually. It's true. It's a little bit like that. It's true. So let's do it. Let's see how quickly you guys can figure this out. The first question is, which of these gateways, they get much harder, by the way. Which of these gateways is best for Boolean um, decisions? This is the easy question. This is a test out. This is to weed out the people who have never seen BPMN before. Um, almost like a write your name at the top of the page sort of question. Okay. With everyone reporting, we have a very clear 86% and very clearly someone is in the wrong meeting. Uh, but don't worry, you're more than welcome. You can maybe use a misclick. I can't assume too much. The answer, of course, is the exclusive gateway. It is a well done for almost everybody. Um, next up. In what scenario will task B not be executed? After three minutes of task A, before three minutes of task A, never, or it will always be executed. It's a little harder, a little, little more complicated. You have to know some symbols. Um, we got a very quick answer already off, so someone knows this straight away. Well done. Okay, after three minutes, uh, it got a few votes. We got a lot of people going with always. The answer, of course, is always. And why is that? Because this, of course, is a non-interrupting timer event, meaning that we will do this task, but it'll never be interrupted, so we will always do this. Um, if anyone has any critiques about my questions, I will ask you to type them somewhere that I can't read them because I don't care. Uh, next up, when does this process end? When the message event, I should say event, is triggered, when the timer is triggered, when both events are triggered, or when the first of these events is triggered. 
when will this process end? It's a real quick quiz. I should have given more time. <laughs> okay, once again, people are doing great when both events are triggered is indeed the correct answer. This, of course, is a parallel gateway, meaning that two tokens will arrive here, uh, one on each. And when both, when the last token enters an end event, it will, of course, trigger the end of the process. Wonderful. We have, I think, just one more question. And that's the hardest one, right? It, no, I didn't do Well, yeah, it's pretty hard, yeah. How well, many times will task A be executed? Zero, one, two, or three? It is probably the hardest one, I think. It definitely requires a knowledge about BPM and symbols, I would say. Uh, I say so too, yeah. Very good. Look at this. I should have created much harder questions this time around. Everyone oh, went for so Everyone for two is correct, because this is a parallel gateway which sends three tokens. One just disappears here in the end event and nothing happens. The other two arrive here. And this, of course, is not a parallel merging, because I'm very sneaky. Not sneaky enough, apparently, because everyone knew it. It's a it's a merging gateway. So both will arrive here. Oh, sorry, it's not a merging gateway, it's an XOR. So both will arrive here, but go right through it and trigger task eight twice. Well done. Now, for the moment of truth, who is it that deserves my um, undying devotion and uh, and love? It is, of course... Florian, well done. Oh, wow. Very close. And T's oh, a lot of people did very well there. And Shanti, three out of four is not bad, Shanti. Well done. Um, uh, and anyone else, thanks for trying. Um, but well done. Congratulations. Flori Florian also was super quick. If you look at the time, like 49 seconds, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, maybe people wow. be cheated. Yeah. Okay. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Now we now that we have um uh, now that we have our fun uh, joy and laughter over with, it's now down to serious business. Uh, Nayla, would you like to take the first question? Yeah, sure. Should we should we start with, uh, well, T's question is the latest one. I'd like to, to, uh, sure, to, to start with, with what you said. Why didn't the quiz contain any question about the complex gateway <laughs> that was announced on 1st April, April 1st? Yeah. Yeah, I think... I think we still sometimes need to figure out it's super complex because with all the blockchain and things involved in it, it's sometimes even for us super hard to understand. I don't know. Mm, but I think for sure we, we should focus more on the complex gateway. I don't know if you have anything to add, Niall. Uh, yeah, the complex gateway, of course, has infinite multiple choices. So it would be very hard to choose a right answer. But thanks, Tease, for reminding me that horrible gateway exists. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what a wonderful present. Okay, next up. Uh, should we take the most voted one here, Nela? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Um, it says, hello, can we avoid external tasks, especially not error, connection refused, cause a peak in resource consumption to come on a service restart? Interesting. Okay, so this is, I'm guessing, what happens is when you um, start, if Kamunda goes down or you need to restart Kamunda and you're using the external task pattern, let's say you have... Um, like five or let's say 10 services or something, okay? And um, let's say they occasionally pull uh, the engine every now and then to get um, to get their, their, their information. Now, this is all fine when everything's running and everything's fine. But if you restart the engine, it might come back up online. And what might happen is all the services all at once hit it to, to, to fetch and lock. And then you might run out of resources and then you might get a connection refused. So how do you fix that? Well, we have a good answer for you. We have exponential back off. This is um, specifically, I think, talking about um, come on to seven. Yes, it this says seven, 17, yes. Yeah, this, this doesn't actually happen with eight. But exponential back off means that the problem is that when all the services hit the engine at once, when it comes back online, that's all of the required like throughput has been used up by all at once. So we need to stop that from happening. And we do that by saying to the external task, if you don't make a connection, if you get a four, 400 or 404 or, or whatever problem, um, when you connect, uh, 400 is a bad example, 404, uh, then wait a certain amount of time before you ask again. The ideal scenario here is that each of the nodes will then be able to calculate a random wait time that then they're all then trying again at different times, which means you won't get this overload all at once. This is configurable in the workers as far as I remember. And it's a good, it should be really something you do by default, especially with lots and lots of workers. So yeah, in short, 
exponential back off with random uh, time intervals um, for, for, for waiting. And that should fix the, the resource consumption. That's if I'm reading that question correctly. So I hope that is correct. Uh, cool. Well, anything to add to that, Neela? No, just if you didn't read it correct, uh, if you sorry, if you didn't read it correctly, and there are follow up questions, you will also find us in the forum. So normally, we can also help you in the forum if we didn't answer things correctly, Absolutely. or not not to the way that you the, or not to the details you would like to receive an answer. Saying yeah. this. <laughs> Nila is already ensuring that if I've answered this incorrectly, there's some sort of <laughs> way in which we can find out. <laughs> no, well, I mean, you answered that how I would answer it. But yeah, sometimes we don't know all the details of the problem, right? Maybe it's not what you assumed. And sure. then this is a different problem, I guess. Okay, let's click it. Okay, next up. Um, why can't, okay, this is pretty, these are both quite good. Yeah, which, let's. Which one do I you mean, want, actually? I take the why. Um, why can I not implement the listener's external tasks? Uh, well, I think the short answer is because we haven't implemented the option. And uh, why is that the case? Well, in, in general, um, we or if you have the listeners, you want to yeah shorten out the logic of your process. You don't want to have everything in your process model. And um, I'm not aware why this decision was made, to be very honest. Maybe Nile has more back uh, or more background information on that, but as as it is for now, and that's also a Kamunda 7 question. Um, it is like um it's like that for, for C7, so for Kamunda 7, um, because in C8 you don't have the listeners. And if you want to use the listeners, you um, would need to implement them as a Java class or as an expression. Um, interestingly enough, I remember now that we once had the similar question about um, an architecture where external tasks were heavily used. And you could like find some tricks around it with like using BPMN, with like setting a variable and using an event sub process with a non-interrupting um, yeah. conditional event that then would do some logic that the listener would do. Um, I don't want to say if it's good or bad. I mean, it makes your model definitely bigger and probably there's going on more in your model then. Um, but that would be a way to work around the fact that you cannot uh, implement the listener as an external task for now. Yeah. So I have a little more information about why we can't do this because it actually is quite complicated. Wow. Uh, let me explain. So an external task, let's say, is this task right here. And the nice thing about external tasks is they fit really well into the concept of state, right? Everything is a state. We have this state. We arrive here. That's a state. The task is locked. That's a state that's visible. The problem with listeners is they actually exist in a sort of a pre-state place. Now, this was fine for Java classes, which run in a single thread, right? So you could actually just like bounce through this and be sure there's no need to wait before this task starts, but after this sequence flow ends. This technically is not a state. The problem with external tasks as listeners are that they actually have to hold state because they have to send to the engine saying, I've worked needs to be done. And they'll need to manage a whole life cycle around external tasks. And that whole thing will happen invisibly right here. And that's actually a very hard and complex thing to add to a state machine that already describes all the places where state can be handled and why it can be handled. So it actually turns out to be more complicated than you would think. Now, Nela actually already did suggest a, a pretty good um, answer to this, which is using an, uh, something like this. Um, I think you built this actually, Nela, didn't you once for, for a, a, a workshop or something? I can't remember. Um, I just remember that as a, as a like solution, as a workaround solution. Yeah, this kind of works. Um, so <laughs> this will work, but it'll run in parallel, which is the downside, which if, if, isn't that a, if that isn't a problem, then it should be fine. But this can be triggered. This is a non-interrupting conditional event, which can be triggered by a variable that you can set as a listener. It'll then in parallel run the listener as an external task and then end. And that can actually work quite well. So Yeah, yeah. but then the, then the question is, you use the listener to reduce the complexity of your model, but then why not just include another service task in front of your of your other service task, right? That could be That's also, true. like, it, it depends a little bit on the logic, I guess. I think that was particular about, maybe that was about a user task listener. I'm not quite sure anymore why why we suggested that solution back then. But yeah. Uh, yeah, good point. Um, I, Did yeah. You? 
I think you're right. But then again, every model is slightly better off if you put an, an event sub process in it. Love sure. Event <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> next up. Um, let's, yeah. Do you want to pick one there, Dale? You got a pretty good one. Uh, huh? There is one for you, I think, if you if you scroll down. Do hogs like strawberries more than they enjoy historical facts? I think that's a, definitely a question you should answer. True. So obviously hawks prefer historical facts. I think everybody uh, would agree that it's a very, very easy choice here. Strawberries are temporary. You eat them, they disappear. But historical facts can stick with you forever and interest other hawks at hawk dinner parties and things. So I would generally suggest that um, hawks should be taught more historical facts, but also geography facts. Let's not stop at historical, um, uh, but that's only in regard to strawberries. I think things do differ when it comes to other types of uh, food, because I do think that a lot of hawks are carnivores, so all those things to take into account. Okay. Uh, all you now. Yeah, let's, <laughs> let's answer this together from your experience. What are common mistakes people do when implementing processes? I start with one thing, you continue with the next, and then I do the next. Do it. Let's do it. Cool. <laughs> I would say one thing I see sometimes is not knowing BPMN completely correctly. So sometimes it starts with the model itself. So BPMN as a language has a lot of things to offer. And often there are already problems with the BPMN model because uh, before we start talking about the technical implementation. Next, Niall, your... Hey, conversation implementing processes. Uh, I totally agree that you got the best one there of people modeling before they learn BPMN um, and all the things that go along uh, with that. But the other thing I, um, I will mention is related is that people forget that uh, BPMN needs to balance readability with execution. And you should always be modeling with the understanding that one of the big benefits of BPMN is actually the ability to use it as a, a way to describe what's happening. Um, depending on who you are, if you're a developer who started from scratch with like with implementing processes, you go with a developer mindset and you honestly don't end up thinking too much about the readability of your model. And, um, and that can actually cause problems down the line because you kind of are missing one of the bigger benefits. So I would say that's a sort of a, a common one. Do you want to throw, throw another one in there? Yeah, yeah, I have a next one I can think of at least. Um, and that's, that's C7 related. I, I, I don't know how C8 is doing it, but like the confusion of process key and ID. So there's a concept that um, in BPMN, you have a process ID, which in Kamunda relates to a key and that the ID is something technically given by the engine. And that often confuses people when using the API because they want to start process instance by ID and not by key. And then they run into the problem that the process is not started and things like that. Mm. So I think it's a, I think if you want to say that's a problem with naming, with naming the elements, um, or with like, yeah, understanding some Kamunda specific things. Mm. Do you have another one like that? Like very specific thing? I'm thinking of common mistakes in terms of like things I would have seen in like early workshops and things that I would do. And, um, I guess. This is probably goes without saying, but let me give it a really good example. In in this is a good come to seven example. People use API calls without fully understanding what they're for or what they do. And now part of this is our fault. Let me give you a perfect example of this. Commander used to come to seven has an API call that we have luckily not duplicated in Commander eight called signal. Okay. And signal is an API call that triggers the ex an execution, so a token, any token, anywhere to move forward, uh, which is fine, except that there's an event called a signal event, which has a different API that triggers specifically signals, which is a broadcast. So what would the problem that would happen would be people would think that the signal API call was used to trigger signal events. And technically it would work if you knew the execution ID, um, which is a problem because it didn't work at all. They might actually go and read the documentation to find out why, but it worked a little bit, which meant they were wondering why is it not broadcasting? Why is it only triggering the one token? So there are big mistakes around assuming certain things about the API and assume, assuming certain things about the process. I if Another thing for seven is transaction boundaries, but like you should read a lot about, uh, read the docs. I know oh. this, is a, this is probably something good, all, all software. Just, just have a little read of some introductory stuff. 
Um, and if you're trying to implement a symbol, re read the docs on that symbol, because maybe it doesn't act like the stack suggests, or maybe there's ways around it. So, But there is sometimes also even trickier ones, even if you understand them sometimes. I remember a lot this like, things with C7 when messages are lost or they are not like quick enough to, to like be received at the point where the process instance wait, um, like the BPMN message. So this can be sometimes tricky. And I think that's something that I really like in C8 that we fixed that because it's not completely compliant with the BPMN spec anymore, but mm -hmm. we give the message a time to live, oh, yeah. which I think is quite handy because it can prevent the problem of that a message got lost because the instance has not been there at the same at the time. Yeah, true. I totally agree. Yeah. Now let's, for the sake of time, there's loads more, of course, <laughs> Nayla, but for the sake of time, we'll just move on to the next thing. Um, let's let's just take the top one, shall we? Yeah. Um, is there an easy way to see if my model that runs with Commodore 7 can migrate to C8? If I recall it correctly, but I would need to Google it, I think in the consulting team, they tried to build a plugin for the modeler, like a migration tool where you could upload your model and see if you can migrate easily to come under eight. So you probably don't have to do anything and just upload your model and test it with uh, with that uh, consulting plugin. Mm. I don't know. Do you have a link handy now? Sure or do, do you? Oh, perfect. <laughs> I was while you were talking there, I was frantically like typing, <laughs> type, like, searching. That's like, like that's like teamwork. So now you found the page. Is there I this? Did, uh, is there the magic tool? I, the magic like... tool, I do know it, is, it exists. One of the consultants did build it, uh, but I don't know where it is. I don't. I don't think it's in a state where we have it in the docs. It should be added here. But this is a good starting point. Um, there are some key things about um, knowing offhand. Like if you don't use scripts and if you use the external task pattern, it's a it's a pretty easy migration. And no listeners, I think. And no listeners. Yeah. If you don't, if you if, you, if there's a bunch of C7 features you don't use, it's quite easy. Um if you if you do use scripts, you can usually uh convert those to feel in most cases. So and actually it'd probably be even easier to do them in feel in some cases. And uh, so it's not the end of the world. Um, if you're using the embedded engine C7, uh, specifically orchestrating Java classes or something, then why does it keep popping up? Then um, uh, go away, Zoom. Uh, then it would be probably a problem, I would say, to well, uh, to migrate. Um, yeah, I mean it depends on the use case, but but if your delegates are super clean. And you have like a good logic in your delegates, you could just wrap them or use the external task, uh, the job worker to wrap your delegate in it. But it, I guess yeah. it depends on your overall architecture, what you want to do. Exactly. So like it's always possible. Like, yeah. It's just an extra step. Yeah, you're It's right. an extra step. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But the key things are that if there's lots of the, the main migration of your model, if we're not talking about business logic, is trying, trying to convert your um, expressions to feel and your scripts to feel is the main thing and try to have all your um, services um, uh, uh, external tasks. Oh, and maybe also consider we are getting there, but some symbols are not supported yet. So oh, if you yeah. have certain symbols, you might need to like find a way around them or you might wait until we we have them in common aid as well. But I think there should be this tool out soon from the from the consulting team that people can check easily so they don't have to do it all on, the, on their own, but they can just upload something to it and then see what still needs to be changed. Yeah, totally agree. Okay, hope that helps. I will put this link somewhere after the um, event or after the, yeah, talk. let's click a button. Let's do it. Uh, let's go with an easy one, Naila. Okay. Actually, not easy, it's, it is hard. Um, very okay. simple. Um, there are so many that I like. Um, it's definitely not the complex gateway, although people <laughs> might have hoped for it. Yeah, I, sorry, think... <laughs> I know what I... I know what you are going to say, so I'm not stealing this from you. Thank so you. <laughs> I think I really like the event-based gateway. And um, well, why do I like it? Because um, first of all, if you look at it from a, just from the perspective of how it looks like, it looks quite like fancy because a lot is going on there. <laughs> I think uh, that's something I like. And I also like the possibility you have here to really show that you are not evaluating data, but you have those external events you are waiting for, or like um, time-based events. So I think that that makes it kind of really nice. So I, I like the event-based gateway. 
it is actually the best gateway i do agree with you there actually yeah it's very very pretty i go on with your favorite pk manson but well, I, right. I could always I, i could bet what you're going to say now it is of course the events yeah. process which is my favorite and always has been because it's so like diverse look at these two different things right so we have here this is a thing that will trigger whenever an event happens and it won't interrupt the process with a very small change we can then say okay well if we get a signal from anywhere across the whole engine we're going to cancel the process these are two fundamentally different use cases that are both implemented in the same symbol basically this thing is so so good it can also be used for loads of case management stuff. The main reason I love this is because um, myself and Neela, when we were consultants, would do CMN trainings, uh, which is something that- it's just No, a... I never I never did a CMN training. Oh, I have to confess, <laughs> yeah, I, I never did one. <laughs> so I did, and I really didn't like CMN too much because it actually it has a very steep learning curve. And for a while, I remember thinking, if only we could do this stuff in BPMN. And then I actually tried and we would do loads of, when we stopped supporting CMN, we would go to customers and do workshops and everything we could build in CMN, we were able to build in BPMN. And it was because external, um, these uh, event subprocesses were able to do the one thing that CMN did very well, which was trigger things based on events under certain contexts. So always quite like that. So yeah, that was a, Fun symbol. If anyone has a different a different symbol that they would like us to uh, to propagate, a T steady like sequence flows. <laughs> <laughs> they are. I mean, they are, quite use, I mean, they are super useful it without is, them. It's very hard to build a good model without them. I totally agree. <laughs> like this would just wouldn't work. Yeah, no, I totally agree. That's uh, that's really good. Yeah. Any other suggestions? We're more than welcome to hear them. But I think it's it's hard to come back from sequence flow. <laughs> Okay. Um, yeah, this is what we get all the time. Um, I think it's just, yeah. What is the difference between a manual task and a user task? Do you want to open your modeler quickly now? So to, sh so to, to show what, well, yeah. So like the user task and the manual task, both are performed by, by a human, but the difference is from an perspective of an automation uh, that the user task somehow is connected to your system via a UI where the user can provide some information and then the process would continue. So it waits for the user input, but the manual task is something that is not connected to a IT system. So this is happening outside of the scope of any IT system. Basically, if you see those in automation, I would say something is not going well. If you have a lot of them, sometimes people have them just to outline that something still is happening in the process that is maybe manually um but yeah not connected to the it i've never seen actually a lot of those when we talk about commander processes so i don't see them a lot in our like from customers or from community i think they show up fairly frequently in um uh what's it called models by um Uh, like analysts and designers who want to specify mm -hmm. the difference between something that the IT, as you as you pointed out, something the IT system is responsible for, and something that happens that's relevant to the process, but for the understanding of the process, but not really relevant for the IT system. Something like you know an event that happens somewhere else that maybe someone's like, oh, when do we? When does that happen within the process? Just so I know. But yeah, you're right. It's pretty uncommon to see them. Um, yeah, there we go. Um, okay, here we go. Come to seven is RPA bridge is coming to eight after something similar. Good question. Um, the answer is I don't know, but it wouldn't be too difficult. So come to seven's RPA bridge is essentially a very complicated external task, which actually would make it quite easy to implement with, um, uh, with a C8, um, thing. We, funnily enough, we haven't had a huge amount of people asking about the RPA bridge for CH for some reason. It would make sense as a good addition to the connectors framework, I think. Um, yeah, maybe, I'll, do you know anything about this, Neela? I have no idea about it, but as you said, I think it would make a great connector actually to the different, to the different uh, RPA tools that we have to UI pass and automation anywhere or something like that. Yeah. Uh, you're, yeah, maybe look into that. I'll I'll pass that information to our our, our lovely people in the product management um, team because they love hearing from us. So that's ah a really quality BP man question right here. This is great. Um, wow. Okay. Uh, we have to try it out. I guess I I have a I I cannot fully 
say that I know it, but I have an assumption what what what's possible. Can a compensation event within a sub process trigger compensation in the scope above? That's lovely. Let's try and model it. And yeah, talk about I it. do you have it modeled? No, I don't have it modeled. But from a feeling, I would yeah model what you want from a okay. feeling or what like feeling is always bad when we talk about technical things. I would I would say no. I would say the compensation is in um. their in their own scope. Maybe it works from. See, I think if the compensation is triggered within the sub process, it would just compensate the things in the sub process. If the compensation is triggered now at the end of this thing, make the end event a compensation. So I think this is what they're asking, right? We have yeah, but make 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 the make the make the end event also a compensation. Yeah, because I ah. I think if you would trigger this one, all the co attached compensation events would be triggered. But if you trigger the one inside, you would just trigger the one inside. Uh, let's make it even more complicated. Ooh. <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah. Ha. Huh. So let's, uh, for those who aren't, of, are, this is actually a very good symbol, compensate. So the way this works is if the token reaches this symbol, the rules state that all completed tasks within the scope um, uh, will be, or lower scopes uh, that have this symbol will be rolled back. Will be rolled back by whatever this does. So let's say if we, the token simulation for sure does not work with compensation, does it? I think also it's not the best indicator how it would work in. Let's mm. find out if it works. Hmm? No. And now you can, you have manually, like you can decide manually what you want to roll back, but I think that's not. <laughs> So yeah, so from this case, if this gets triggered, then this will definitely be triggered. This yeah. will definitely not be triggered. It's not completed yet. This would only be triggered if this entire scope is finished. And while this mm -hmm. token is there, it won't. Now, I actually don't think this will be triggered either, although I'm not sure, because compensation actually um, sort of it's, it's a weird scoping mechanism, isn't it? It's, it propagates it down, right? Everything has been completed. So I, but I would, yeah, I would also agree this first one will not be compensated from yeah. here. But I, yeah, we, we would need to deploy this, I think. Yeah, that's a fun thing to figure out. So thanks for a really complicated question. Whoever sent this one in, I like it a lot. Um, but I, I think the. Or oh, maybe, maybe someone in the chat can tell us what they think. Yeah, no true. If, if somebody knows better than we do, um, that which is unlikely, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go on record as, as admitting anyone knows any better than we do, Neil Adore. But, but I mean, you you said this time we are asking the community the question, so maybe because it's a question we cannot clearly answer, we throw back to the community. So that's true. This is your responsibility, guys. Physician, heal thyself. <laughs> okay, I'm going to uh, take that as complete for now. Um, let's knock through these because we got about maybe 10 minutes left. So let's knock through the, the last ones. Um, how can I best run Monday locally without trying it? Go, Neela. Uh, you, uh, we have multiple options. We have a Docker Compose uh, that, that works. Uh, but the best way actually is to use the Helm charts and do it with Kind. And Kind creates um, like a like a Kubernetes cluster locally for you. And then you can use the Helm charts and you can start it. You start it directly with operate and with task list and you can just try it out um, as you wish. And I think that's the best way, basically. Nice. Next one, I'll do this one. Uh, what are good ways to test your Beachman process? There are two ways of testing it. First, um, if you build the process model, you can test it with the token simulation that you showed me use. But actually, weirdly, I saw a shiny new button. If you saw this. Uh, how do I get to, oh, there we go. Uh, test process, yeah. Yeah, there's a, there it is, test process. So this will actually try to deploy your process and step through it, as far as I'm aware. So that's a kind of a cool thing that, that showed up recently. Um, so you can do that before you deploy it, which is quite nice. So yeah, give that a try. It's an alpha, so feedback always welcome. Um, that, we did that we'll one. just answer that one. Um, when should I use connectors for HP calls and when not? That's a pretty good oh. question. That's a good question. I think it depends what we are talking about. If we talk about C7, I don't think there are a lot of good use cases for the connectors. If we talk um, about C8, we have the REST connector. And it really depends what you want to do on, uh, after that with the answer you receive. So if it's something more or less simple, I would say go for the connector because you don't have to implement the whole REST logic yourself. And then you can also 
use it without running your own worker. If you use, for example, DAS, then the connector runs for you and you can use feel to get to the results and do a lot of things with feel already. But I guess if it's getting more complex with the call, um, it might be a good idea to do it or implement it your own. And also probably if you use it in a self-managed way, um, also to see if you want to run a connector self-managed or if you want to run your worker self-managed. Nice. Um, Neil, this is for you from TIS. Oh, what's the most interesting or funny question that came up during a question corner? Um, I remember once, I don't remember the question, but I think we both had a hard time to understand the question. I, I don't know if you remember that version of the question corner. We were where we didn't really get the idea of the question. Um, that was nice. And the most interesting ones are the one that I'm passing to Nile, where I'm seeing it and I'm like, ooh, I, I was wondering the same. Maybe Nile should answer that because then I'm learning something here. <laughs> um, <laughs> They have I, been. They have been a few. I would say. Yeah. Now, do you have? Uh, do you have a funny or interesting question you remember? I do remember that one that was written in such a way that it was just barely a sentence. Like we oh, couldn't yeah. work out what it actually said, and we had two different interpretations. But the, the fun thing was we both gave an answer to it, which I thought was kind of like shows our our grit and determination to answer even questions that we can't actually read. Um, there's a. There's always pretty funny questions. I mean, anything that involves a complex gateway just makes me angry. So <laughs> that's not funny at all. I feel that's just uh, people being mean to me. Um, let's, uh, so let's move on. Uh, would you recommend the use of migration islands when migrating to C7? Uh, for sure. I mean, there's, right now, there isn't really a very great, um, there isn't a very great direct migration back, but also like no one migrates in big bangs anyway. You want to be able to have the safety of having like moving bit by bit at least, and then trying to move, you know, where it's reasonable as well. In some cases, people will only be able to move some of their process to C8 and some not. So yeah, um, there's a lot of go there's a lot of talk and a lot of um, tooling we still need to create for migration to C8. So um, watch this space. Oh my God, the next question, I put that, like I put a question into the question corner because I just wanted to uh, highlight that we have a community project going on. What's your favorite holiday drink? Because Niall and I created a DM a table that helps you to select a drink for the Christmas seasons or for the holiday seasons. And I think the quite interesting part is that there are so many drinks that people drink uh, at this time of the year and we really would like to know what people like to drink um, across the globe. Um, Nile, do you have the do you have the GitHub repo handy? I <laughs> I'm not as fast as I was before with googling it, so uh, let's see if I can quickly find it. Um, um, we also will build something out of this. Like um, I think you you got the information. Like the region, you should include the region where this drink is famous. Um, if it's hot or cold and the amount of um, alcohol it contains, so we want to have non-alcoholics in there, but maybe also something like mulled wine. So, um, yeah, it's just, uh, so here it is in all its glory. Um, oh, if you, if you're interested in putting your, uh, holiday drink in here, you can see the DMN table. Neil took a picture of it. it is I mean, you can, you can create a pull request, but you could also just create an issue. If you have a new drink you like to include, and if you don't mm. want to go through the whole process, I think there was a LinkedIn post. You can also comment on the LinkedIn post. We will include We'll find ways to include your contributions. Yeah. Just need to fork this and then you can create a pull request if you like or, or an issue. As and we'll we'll do some stuff with this at some stage then. Cool. Thanks, Neela. And um, we're almost at time. And this is a nice question. I'm surprised you can get more up, folks. Will it be possible to start processes in Command A from task list? Well, we can start them from the modeler, which is quite nice, but I still don't think it's possible to start them from the um task list. So I'm not sure. I don't, um, I don't uh, think so. But we should. We should we, that probably that sounds like a good feature. Um, oh, I think Tease has asked to, oh, Tease has also um, found some, some information in the spec for us with regarding this diagram. And it says, if no activity in, is specified in a global context, uh, all complete activities in the process are compensated. BPMN 10.72. Ah, that's like the number. Okay, I was. I was oh thinking. wait, no, we have one from David. 
David suggests if so, what Commander does if a compensation is triggered within a subprocess, it is not propagated to the side. So the way Commander mm -hmm. will work is that this will not trigger anything outside the subprocess. So okay. thanks, folks, for doing our job for us. Uh, we appreciate it. Um, uh, teas and uh, drinks that you want to give us can be alcoholic or not. We don't mind. Just any kind of holiday season is good for me. Um, yeah, I mean, you can also drink beer, and beer is something you would drink all, like all, all, all the year, or you would drink uh, Coke, Coke, cola, or something like that. I don't know. That's very, very true. Yeah, I'm just going mm -hmm. to. We're going to close things out now because we're about to the end. Okay, Neil, you have to vamp for time while I try and log log back into the. Um... Okay. Um, oh, so you you crashed your computer? No. Slightly, you're on the wrong. I slight, mean, you're on slight, the wrong. Slightly, slightly, yeah, slightly. Maybe that's maybe that's a time where you should consider switching to a Linux operating <laughs> system. You are just never going to give that up, are you? Okay. No, I never. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> If it hasn't happened one, yet, one day, yeah. one day, one day, and I, when, once you like, once you start your computer and I see like an Ubuntu or another like uh, distribution, I will be like so happy. Yeah, I know. I, I will never let that happen. Okay, so <laughs> let's uh, go back here. So we got a few things uh, that we ask for you to take a look at. First, if you've been using Commanda, especially Commanda Eight, we are very interested in um, uh, hearing from you. Uh, some user tests. You can scan this lovely thing here, um, potentially get some swag out of it, uh, or you can send Liv an email. Her email address is right down there. Um, she's always very happy to chat to you. She's a lovely person and always fun to chat with just in general. So if you want to like give us some user uh, feedback, we were very happy to uh, take that. Uh, we also have the Commanda Developers Newsletter that goes out every uh, month. DevRel team gets together a whole bunch of stuff that's interesting for developers, and we send that out to you. Um, so that's always kind of fun if you want to sign up for that if you haven't already. Um, the kind of most important thing I want to talk about is that probably my favorite thing, which is the Commanda Community Summit is coming up in May. Why it's relevant so early in, uh, in a different year is that we are taking submissions for talks. Um, this is a develop, this is a conference that's very geared towards our community. So our developer community in particular. It's a technical conference and we want all sorts of talks about Commander 7, Commander 8, what you're working on. Um, just let us know the sort of stuff you've solved and um, and of course, if you're interested uh, in this already and you don't want to talk, but want to see these kinds of talks, sign up, I think is available. You can actually sign up now, um, I think, um, either today or next week. And yeah, I love this conference. It's going to be in Berlin in person and also hybrid around the world. Uh, yeah, so please do sign up. I love this conference. It's my favorite um, thing that we do in a year. In, in, I even prefer to come into con, but don't tell anybody. Um, this is really, really good fun. So please do um, sign up and come by and say hi. Uh, also, we have a, we hire people all the time. So why not join? Come on, it's great, I can suggest. And uh, yeah, and I would I always like to say, hey, join Come On Dev. Uh, actually, there's a role the DevRel team uh, opened up uh, entirely because, of course, this is the last question corner, as I mentioned. And that is, of course, because Neil is moving on to uh, um, shiny new things. Uh, uh, after a fun six years working together, uh, myself and Neela are, uh, by the end of this year, going to uh, to, to split up finally. And uh, this will probably make uh, oh, no. more work get done, probably, in general. <laughs> Don't but, say that. <laughs> we, we, we probably find a way to still work on something together. I'm quite sure about it. For sure. But uh, yeah, I want to say, of course, thank you for Nela. This is the last question corner because, of course, I could, we could never do this without the both of us present. And so we decided to sunset this little project and think of something next new year. But thank you very much for the last couple of years, Nela, and working on Question Corner and a bunch of other things. The community, of course, I'm sure greatly appreciates uh, all the, the fun that you've brought to all the events that we've talked about. So thanks very much and uh, good luck in future endeavors. I'm sure you'll be seeing uh, within very, uh, loads of community events because you're not going to leave the community just no, uh, no luckily the Kamunda community is open source right so I can yeah. still like even what was not being a customer I can still like you know contribute so um, I'm exactly. doing that you will I mean if you think now oh finally she's gone no no that's not the way how it works <laughs> <laughs> you I thought I'd done enough to scare you off Nela. I guess I was wrong oh uh, 
But uh, yeah, thanks a lot. And of course, thanks for everybody joining the question corner today. Greatly appreciate your questions. And uh, yeah, the recording of this should be going to be tomorrow or Monday. And uh, thanks a lot for um, your questions and for showing up. Thanks, Renela. Thanks to um, the team who put this together, the events team. And uh, we will say goodbye. And it's uh, a goodbye from the question corner. See yeah, you in the new year. Season's greetings. <laughs>